Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In this week's video, we have a brushless motor that was dropped off right at my front door by Racer 686. I'm gonna roll the footage where this motor ended up locking up right in the middle of flight. So let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. After watching that video, we can essentially say that literally the motor ground itself to a halt. Now we know that if the motor cannot spin while that plane is in the air, that plane has to come to the ground under zero power. Now if you want to see what happens with the rest of that video, I'm going to leave a link in the description below so that you can watch the full footage of that entire flight right on Racer686's channel. What I am expecting has happened within this motor is that the rotor literally spun itself apart and the rotor is in contact with the stator not allowing anything to rotate and that's why no matter what you know we certainly can't rotate this shaft by hand and we probably can't do it quite easily with a tool either so this is rock solid completely seized if you try and spin it up you are going to blow out your speed control so we want to make sure that the first thing we do is pull this apart so let's go ahead and jump into the next part of the video where we start disassembling this and finding out what has happened. One of the first things we are going to do with the motor in order to get the entire rotor out so we can see exactly what's going on inside this motor is heat up the end bell at the back of this motor. Ultimately, this motor looks like it has the end bell fastened on with some sort of Loctite material, I'd imagine, and then from there, it's press fit onto the motor can. So typically, these types of motors do not like a load being placed in this direction. So that would be a pusher prop style as the entire end cap here would have to hold and bear the force, and that could pop this loose if there was some sudden amount of pressure that it would not be able to hold. Let's first go and apply heat to the end bell so that we can break down whatever might be holding this together. This should make it very easy to pop this cap off. So let's give that a shot first. All right, so we've used this heat gun now for a couple minutes, it feels quite hot on the end, so now we're gonna go ahead and give it a good tap. So we're expecting that this shouldn't be too bad, it should be relatively easy to pop off. So let's see how that, how true that is. Uh, so nothing yet. Okay, so second hit, we already got it to pop all the way. And if we feel around this area, it's still hot, uh, it does, Look like there is some material that was holding it on there. So it might have been some form of glue, Loctite, whatever. Uh, so now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to just pull this off. It looks like as we heated up this area, a little bit of glue was actually placed. I don't know if you can see that, but right on the wire. So this should be easy to push through our connectors here on the end. Looks like one wire is easy, the other wire is easy. That guy has a little bit of glue stuck to him, so what we'll do here is see if we can push it through. If we can't, oh, there it goes. So that released. So the next thing that we do, we can see already inside this motor what it looks like. We got this piece of, I don't know what you'd call this, uh, string. Uh, it looks like it would be a type of Kevlar string is what I'd imagine they would use in a motor like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to continue to push this out, see if we can get that to fully come out. It looks like it's still stuck in there. So a couple taps, see what happens if we knock that out a little bit further. The rotor, obviously we know there, there's got to be something going on there. So let's finish this off. So we got that out a little bit further. All right, we're just gonna use the cloth here and pull the rest of this motor out. Okay, there we go, we got it out. Looks like a bearing came with it here. So there's a bearing sitting there and our rotor. So here we could start taking a look as to what exactly happened with our motor here. So with the rotor now removed, we can see that there's a lot of this material here and you can see that it's in the shape 
of our rotor. It's rounded and it looks like there's a huge clump of it that got all sandwiched in together and that's what I'm holding here in my left hand. Uh, if we take a look at the rest of this, we got more of this stuff coming apart off the rotor. Uh, incredible. It looks like all the stuff here is positioned in such a way to make sure this rotor is held in very tightly. The magnets don't let loose. That's not what the case is with what we see here. There's tons of this material that has failed and that's exactly what happened in this motor. So it's just like a bunch of dust almost. Uh, that's what I see. So I'm going to have to take this and, and vacuum it carefully. Here we can see a little bit of where things may have actually made contact. It doesn't look super smooth in certain areas. It looks roughened up. Might not be able to catch that within the video. Uh, if we take a look at the inside of the motor now. So the inside of the motor has tons of this material still hanging out <laughs> inside this can. There's lots of it. Uh, inside we could see there's a couple rough spots where it looks a little bit uh, odd but outside from that the windings look like they're in great condition and we should be able to verify that however it would be easiest to verify it if there was a new rotor in here. At this point we essentially have two paths that we can take. The first path being to obviously buy a brand new motor replacing everything in its entirety so that we can start right from ground zero. Drop that new motor into our radio controlled airplane and we should be good to go. Or our second option is to verify that the windings of the motor are not damaged and are unaffected. Once we make this verification and everything turns out to be okay, we can buy a brand new rotor to replace the rotor that we currently have damaged and then we should get that inside of the motor and we should be back up and running. Hopefully something like this does not happen to you and if it does, know that you do have a couple options. Well guys, that pretty well does it for this video. Like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.